What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. The 
norm should be death in prayer. The norm should be it's something we look forward to every day. The norm should be when I'm leaving the time of prayer, I'm actually like grateful for that, and I'm actually looking forward to my time tomorrow when I'm in prayer. Why is that? Because in prayer, we know this very, very quickly as Catholics, you talk to your children, prayer very simply is a conversation with God. And please tell me, what is more important than a dialogue with God? I'm listening. Nothing. And so our prayer life not only needs work, it takes work. And we've got to be willing to put in the work because it's worth it. We know you're going to have a lively relationship with somebody that's very difficult if there's not a two-way communication going. If there's not transparency, if there's not honesty, if there's not vulnerability, those things are missing. It's very hard to maintain a lively relationship. There is this interesting dynamic of Catholics, Christians too, Catholics, not really sure what to do in prayer. My question is this. Does the Bible have anything to say about prayer? Is there anything, I mean, it's a big book, right? I mean, there's like literally maybe a thousand pages or something, like double column, small print. There's a lot going on here, a lot of stories, a lot of teaching, a lot of songs, a lot of history, a lot of poetry. Is there anything here that can like help us? Like teaching of this is how you pray well, or an example. Is there anything in this book that can help us in our prayer? Unfortunately, there's not. There's nothing in here about prayer. Is that true? Is anybody awake? Want to talk? There's a lot in here about prayer, right? It's the Bible. Okay? There's a lot in here. You hear it every Ash Wednesday. The reading. You go to the life of Jesus Himself. And he says this: When you pray, He's giving you specific, concise. Clear instructions. He says, when you pray, go to your inner room. Shut the door. And pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. Right? That's not veiled in some obscure parable. That's not a teaching that's like a hard to decipher. When you pray, he says, go be alone with God. Shut the door. Be alone with God. And speak to him as a child does to his father. Pretty good advice, huh? No, we as Catholics, no, we know. There's a time for communities to gather together and pray together. And ask, for example, we know that. We as Catholics know, especially, the family that prays together stays together. We know there's a time for family prayer. But we also know, because of the Bible, because of Jesus' words, that there's also a time for you to shut out the entire world and just be alone with God. If you don't like those instructions, take it out with Jesus himself. So not mine. Don't kill the messenger, right? These are the words of our Lord. Go be alone with God. He says. We see it in his life frequently when out to the desert, to the wilderness, up into a mountain to pray and be alone with God. Step number one, if you're going to be pretty good at prayer, you got to find a long time with God. you got to find that time to be with The next recommendation is this. Take your Bible and go about halfway through. You're going to open it up just about halfway through. Okay? First we need to get it. Let's <laughs> clear it off a little bit. You open it up about halfway through. What do you find? Look at this. Okay, you need to go to the left. We'll make it just a little bit. And you're going to find the book of Psalms. Psalms. Let's just talk about those for one second. So we're all on the same page. What are the Psalms? You hear them every single time you come to Mass. First reading is a responsorial song. Pop quiz. Say one line from the song today. Okay, we will know the real music again. Okay, every single mass, the church says we want the people to hear a song. What are they? There are 150 of them in the book of Psalms. 150. Don't get intimidated. 
video about it. Each one is like a half a page long, right? So put your songs in this page alone. 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138. They're not long, so even though it's 150, don't get scared of it. They're pretty short. You can sit in a minute or two and work through a song. What are they? It's like the original hymn. They're prayers written to God in the Jewish world. They were written over the course of centuries. And some of the oldest songs that we have, we sit down, are 3,000 years old. Think about it. When Mary had the child Jesus on her lap and was singing him these songs, some of the songs she sung were already a thousand years old. Which means they've been speaking to the human heart for a very long time. If you don't like them, there's actually something wrong with you. Right? These are prayers. When the Jewish people would gather on Saturday, they would hear the word of God, they would hear a foreign homily, not much changed. And they would together as a community sing these prayers to God, which are now the Psalms. So, one great way to pray is to block off space, block off time, open up the book of Psalms, and read one line and stop. Digest that. Read another line and stop. Read another line. Stop. You know me. Some of you do. I like to eat. I just say that. I like to eat. When I was here in Marginal, I grew in wisdom and stature. Okay? <laughs> so imagine like a buffet table in front of you, lots of different kinds of food. And you're looking at it, and you're like drooling over it, and you want it, but none of it is going to do any good at all unless you take a piece of it and consume it. Right? The Bible has a whole spray of stories and good stuff. The Psalms, there's 150 of them. There's a lot of them. Any individual song is going to have maybe 20 verses. But unless you stop and take something from that and consume it, it's not going to do you hardly any good at all. So when we pray with the scriptures, you are taking a single line and you're going to extract it and you're going to chew on it. And then, you're going to take another line and chew on it, and chew on it. We'll take, for example, Psalm 25, which is the song you have memorized. We just heard a little bit ago, so I don't even know. Psalm 25. Here's an example. Alone in my room, my door is shut, and alone with God, I fire my mind, and now I'm going to read it, build a piece, and just digest it. O Lord, make me to know your ways. Teach me your paths. Teach me your paths. I've got a big decision coming up, Lord. I know that your way leads to happiness. I know that your path leads to holiness. Teach me the way I should go. Help me, Lord, to choose well. It's good. On to the next one. Lead me in your truth, O Lord, and teach me. Lead me in your truth. Teach me, Lord, your ways. Teach me to love like you love. Teach me to forgive as our Lord was forgave. Teach me to be, for, to be courageous.
It's not going to come on that. Friend, the scriptures. Okay, here's your homework assignment. You can do this in your family and preach it. You just like drop a bomb and leave. Somebody else has to deal with it. Here's your homework assignment for this week. I challenge you every day this week to block off time to be alone with God. Every day. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Open up the Psalms. Pick one that jumps out at you. You're going to have you're going to have things. One's going to be a prayer for forgiveness in time of sin. Deliver me from slavery. Praise to you, Lord, for the beauty of creation. Grateful, wrap prayers of gratitude because things are going well. Psalms for every occasion. Flip through and pick a psalm. And for 10, 15 minutes, prayerfully walk through. <laughs> Take something off the line. Consume it and let it nourish you. Let it do what it's here to do. But it won't do it on its own. It requires, we have to do our part. My challenge to you is to find 10 to 15 minutes each day of this week to pray with a psalm each day. Now think about this. Last time, I'm going to be calling. I'll be quiet about a minute. I'll start talking. How does this change your week? How is your week different? If you take 10 or 15 minutes to have a sincere, honest dialogue with God every day, how does that change things? It's COVID, it's difficult, you're busy, you've got things going on, there's a presidential debate coming up, there's a lot to think about, a lot to pull our attention this way and that. You are soaking your mind every day, saying, thinking to yourself, be still and know that I am God. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing in my life. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Wash me of my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. As a deer yearns for running streams, so my soul longs for you, my God. How does that change things? Every day you are soaking your mind and your heart in the inspired word of God, in a prayerful dialogue with God. I've never changed things quite a bit. As Catholics, as Christians, as followers of Christ, let's take his advice. Let's carve out time to be alone with God. And let's enjoy that relationship that he so God desires to have with us.
offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. That the Holy Father will always speak the church with courage and conviction in the midst of our troubled world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are your That our parishes, animated by a missionary spirit, may be places where faith is communicated and charity is seen. Pray to the Lord. Lord yes. That world leaders work to bring justice and peace to the poor and oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord yes. That many men and women will generously accept the call to serve Christ in his church as priests, deacons, and religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord yes. For a healing of our attitudes, that God will free us from the control of pride, selfishness, and glory, and help us to serve others with love, patience, and humility. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faith of the heart, that they may join the angels and saints in the glory of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic King, whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now let us pray in our way of a little bit prayer for the pandemic. Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels, and Mother of the Americans, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son, as you did at the wedding in Canaan. Pray for us, loving mother, and gain for our nation and world, and for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels, that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, Teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate Father. Help the sick and the cause of our joy. Shelter us in the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to stand before you today to gather together from the altar to hear your word and receive the sacrament. We offer you our prayers. We ask you to bless them according to your most holy will. And we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Grant us, O merciful God, that this, our offering, may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and David our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, 
all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give me safe for eternal life.
and have mercy on us, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life and my refuge. When I call Who could stand? But with you there is mercy and forgiveness and a guiding hand. Remember your love and your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, remember your people and have mercy on us, Lord. Oh, Lord, hear the sound of my call and answer me.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Harvest of Hope to Go is a fundraiser for Concern on Sunday, October 4th. This year, meals will be delivered to your door. Call Concern or Parishioner Marie Covage for details or call the parish office. Save the date of Sunday, October 11th at 4 p.m. for a Bartlesville community picnic, Catholic community picnic at St. James. More details will be forthcoming as plans unfold. Stewardship Renewal Weekend was last weekend. It's not too late to submit your renewal card, either by mail, online, or at the church office. Finally, the Knights of Columbus will be selling holiday apple pies. Now is the time to pre-order delicious homemade apple pies. Talk to one of the Knights or call the office and Janice will give you the number to call. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Deacon Dan. Just a, uh, just a quick word. Uh, I actually don't, I'm just filling in this weekend, of course, and I actually don't know where Father John is. I heard he's in Vegas, last I heard. And, um, no, just kidding, I don't know where he is, but I just got a text message, but I'm very grateful to him for all that he's doing for the parish. Um, and for the invitation to come spend time with you. I do enjoy doing what I'm doing. I enjoy doing what I like. Doing, I love what I do. How about that? Um, every day, I talk to your future priests. Every day. So this afternoon, for example, um, I'll be meeting with four students who are in high school, and they're just kicking around the idea. They're not sure what to do. We'll get together in a discernment group. We'll pray together. We'll talk about some aspect of priesthood or discernment. And we will continue to help find the next step for them. Um, So if you are thinking about it, if you just want to know more, if you know somebody who is thinking about being a priest or religious life, have them contact me. I'm sure there's information. I don't know. Somebody will know how to get hold of me. But um, we can definitely help you. We have lots to do. We have lots to pray about, to pray with, to help someone discover why God put them here. That's an important decision to make and uh, not to be taken lightly. It's something I very much enjoy doing. It's good to be with you again this morning. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hallelujah.